If you think for one second that this video does not apply to you because you like to RV in the South, you're a snowbird, then um, you're wrong. Winter RV camping happens all over the country. Florida, mm -hmm. Arizona, Texas. Yes. And the temperatures might be dropping below 30s. We all remember the iguanas, you know, that they fall out of the trees sometimes in Florida. For sure. They're chilly. And we're gonna cover everything from just slightly chilly beyond to absolutely freezing. Full we're gonna go over everything and it's gonna be very applicable to anybody who's RV winter camping. So need not worry, strap in. The do's and don'ts. So let's start off with a do, because I like to keep things positive. So one thing we say is do always keep your tank heaters on. One thing with RVs is that most of them in this day and age are rated as a four season package and they meet some basic criteria that nobody really knows what it is, but <laughs> it's just a, a insulation package involving heavier insulation and some tank heaters. So we always recommend keeping those tank heaters on. And we got to see what that looks like when we went into the underbelly back in January. It's literally like a pad that just slaps on here. And here's the wiring uh, to the 12 volt battery. So that controls that. You got one for the black tank here. And if you're running off your battery, like you're dry camping, you can still flip those on because they run through the 12 volt system. DC power, baby. So don't hesitate to pop those bad boys on even if you're dry camping. We keep ours on all the time when it's cold. Don't skimp out on using propane to heat your RV. Why not? I think a lot of people are afraid of propane because they hear the horror stories that like rigs blow up. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of people say they they completely don't use propane for anything in their rig. Not No cooking or anything. Really? But let me tell you, when it comes to camping in cold weather, you are going to want to utilize your propane system. The, the furnace is okay. like the other term for it. Yeah, in comparison to what else? Like well, some rigs come with a handy dandy, really fancy electric fireplace. Or some people will plug in space heaters, which is great when you want to add supplemental heat inside mm -hmm. your RV. But here's the thing with propane. Most of the time it blows warm air into your underbelly, hence keeping all your lines, all your plumbing nice and warm, preventing it from freezing. Okay, I like that. Tell supplemental. Them, yeah, tell them what happened in Colorado real quick. So with the supplemental thing where we ran an issue is we utilized all the electrical to our advantage, like the electrical heater and other- Spice heaters. Yeah, spice heaters. <laughs> we used it all to our advantage. We're like, well, it's free electricity and we might as well. What happened is we ended up warming the inside to a toasty like 80 degrees, mm. but it was tricking our thermostat into turning off the propane heater and warming the underbelly. So in the meantime, all the pipes underneath us were slowly freezing we're, out. Yes, and I never remembered it getting anywhere close to 80 degrees. I think we barely got to 60. Okay, it might've been a slight exaggeration, <laughs> but it was toasty in here and not so toasty underneath. And another thing is, just a quick tip, side okay. note, make sure you use things like um, thermometers that you can, like you can put Ooh, yeah. wireless thermometers underneath the underbelly so you can keep an eye on how the temperature's doing down there. You know what? You just gave a bonus tip. And by the way, when we're done here, we have more bonus tips. Okay, so I jumped the gun, but we'll get back well, to it's it. Okay, we'll Don't just, worry. We'll just Do consider skirting your RV if you're gonna be exposed for a long period of time. Like if you're staying all winter up in Montana, yeah, definitely oh. consider doing this. But if you're gonna go chill down in Texas and you got like a cold weekend coming up, Mm. Mm. Let's talk about some considerations. Yeah, because skirting could be expensive. Mm -hmm. We did a travel nurse assignment in Bend, Oregon, and we got there end of February, so we knew that it was like coming close to ending winter. Yeah. So we did not skirt, and we did fine. We just obviously blew through more propane. Correct. But if we were there the whole winter, yeah. we would have skirted. It could be time consuming to put up all this skirting as yep. well. It's just a bit of a hassle because you have to take like the fenders off your slide outs. You yeah. wanna make sure you're skirting around your slides. Yeah. You have to measure your RV. So if you are in somewhere this winter and it's not gonna be as cold, but you might have a colder night or two that drops below the 30s, you really don't have to worry all that yeah. much because these RVs are able to withstand some of those temperatures. We're gonna get in some more points later on about what to do when you are faced with those things. Yes. Don't keep your tank valves open. First of all, never keep your black tank valve open. We've talked about this in many videos and we've mentioned something called a poop pyramid. Okay. Are you having a visual? Are you like, 
don't go there, girlfriend. I hear you. So when it comes to camping in cold weather, if it's gonna get chilly, definitely, not maybe, definitely mm -hmm. keep your gray tanks closed. As water starts to come out of those and trickle, cause you're doing dishes a little bit here and there, you're taking a shower. Yeah. That water is gonna collect in the hose and it's gonna freeze. Yeah. Just like everything else when the temperature drops. And then that hose is gonna crack and lead to all sorts of goodies and no, good smelling things. Well, not even the sewer hose, but actually the outlet that connects to the sewer hose oh, that's yeah. exposed to the temperatures. We noticed this as well when we were in Colorado and Pennsylvania, is that water, like Nay was saying, is slowly trickling out and that's kind of icing up ever so slightly on the bottom of that. And once that thaws out, you can have cracking of your actual piping of your RV and that's definitely no bueno, so. You can have poopsicles. Yeah, don't do that. So don't leave those tanks open until you're physically ready to dump. Ensure that you're taking the necessary precautions to prevent any whoopsies down the road. We definitely wanna encourage you to do keep an eye on the temperature at night. Utilize those apps on your phones. They're all mostly free and just make some preparations. If you are going to have a lower temperature that night, don't freak out, just do your due diligence. Well, we're gonna talk about that, but that's basically what happens. We look at our app and we see, oh, it's gonna be 28 degrees as the low tonight. Yeah. So then we go into like preparation mode, but I, we'll get there. I like preparation mode. Mm -hmm. Besides looking at the temperature drops at night, you gotta watch those wind chills. Oh, the, that's a good one. The wind is where it'll hurt yes. your RV, like all that cold air blowing underneath it. Well, I do wanna touch on this though, because we have a lot of experience with it. When we were in Pennsylvania the first night, we showed up on our friend's property and we knew it was gonna get cold, but then what we didn't account for was the wind chill. And that's actually what froze our pipes. Ooh. It wasn't the temperature itself, it was actually the wind chill. That wind goes underneath your RV and it sucks that heat out. Oh. So no matter how much you're cranking on the propane furnace, that heat is just continually getting robbed by the wind creeping underneath your RV. Don't keep your fresh water hose connected all night. If you look at your phone and you see that it's dropping, that is one of the things we think of right away. Yes. I say, hey hun, the temperature is gonna be 28 as a low tonight. Maybe we should consider filling up the fresh water tank, yeah. turning on the water pump and just completely disconnecting the fresh water hose. You know, we talked about the, the tank heaters being on and the whole heated underbelly. So that's all part of the plan is we also make sure throughout the night that the furnace is running. It doesn't have to be on full blast, right. but it is keeping the underbelly toasty. So that's another thing we like to do in our preparation. Yeah, actually that's another point that I wanted to bring up is our fresh water holding tank. That's where we ran a situation where we didn't keep the propane furnace running and we did all this diagnostics of where was it actually frozen and it was right at the inlet of our fresh water tank. Mm -hmm. Another big do is run a dehumidifier. Humidity and moisture is gonna build up within your RV, condensation I should say. Mm, so yes. you wanna get the air clear to that through a dehumidifier. We love the one we have, so mm -hmm. we will put that below. It has not given us any issues. No. You can run on a low, high, and you can set what you want the humidity to be. Which is great. Mm -hmm. And it helps prevent mold and that's even better. Our RV is a Grand Design Solitude fifth wheel, and it is about 35, 34 feet in length. Yeah. So we just have one dehumidifier, but if you're a larger RV, multiple rooms, you might want to get more than one. You know, when we discovered that we needed one, Yeah. I remember we were in our Grand Design Imagine travel trailer back when we first started, oh, and yeah. the walls were wet. Oh, you ran your hand over the walls, it was just like, what? what? Looks like you sprayed a shower nozzle <laughs> over the walls. I'm like, this is crazy, so. I'm like, hon, the RV is sweating. It's, <laughs> it really was. Don't winter RV camp in severely cold temperatures. There's a limit to what these RVs can handle, mm -hmm. and I do see photos of some people like, setting up the skirting and getting ready to go in Canada. Canada, I'm calling you guys out. Yeah. It's a little chilly up there. Y'all are pushing the bar. <laughs> I know people get away with it, but we would not recommend it because I don't know, it's just such a headache. Why you don't spend all this money into an awesome RV and then go like expose it yeah. to all those temperatures. You're gonna run into way more hassles. Yes, it could be done, but our advice is just don't do it. Yes, and uh, the research we found is steer away from like negative 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. That's fair. That's like, I mean, that's pretty cold, you gotta admit. You know what, this is a great spot where I want you guys to pause the video, and if you're watching on the TV, take a note. I want you guys to comment below this video if you've winter RV'd, and I wanna know who in the comments has like done the coldest. And if you don't know how to comment, you need to get on your phones because you can't do it on the TV. So jump on your phones, 
click on this video. Hey, you and your spouse can both do it and both comment and we'll see, like, it's gonna be a fun little, like, yeah. I no, wanna get back to this. No cheating. We're watching you. Do insulate your windows, your vents, and your slide outs. Now, how might you do that? It's different than actually skirting your RV. So you'll have a lot of heat loss through your windows. There's such a wide surface area on there mm -hmm. and that cold is just always intruding on the inside. It wants to steal the heat from the inside of your RV. Don't let it do that. How do we not let it do that? We got a good one for you. It's called Reflectix. Yeah, you can buy that at your hardware store or you can get it on Amazon or Walmart. Yeah. That really helped because we do not have dual pane windows. No, and it's like a shiny bubble wrap, but it's really like conducive to the windows. You just cut whatever figure you want and slam it in there, tape it yes. up and you're good to go. So yeah, create that little air gap. And you can also use the Reflectix for when it's really hot. Yeah, that's actually a good point too. Yeah. There's also those vent covers that you can get that you like a little insert mm -hmm. that you put up in the vent and it helps because heat rises and you don't want it escaping out the top. So a vent is one of those places where it's likely to do that. So yeah. get one of those vent covers. That's really cool too. Well, what's an easy way to like prevent air loss around the slide outs? It's super fancy. <laughs> I'll let you take it. We just take some sheets and blankets and shove it in there. We definitely recommend doing that because there's air drafts under the door. So you know how RVs roll, like nothing's perfect in these things. So you're gonna continuously have these air drafts. Another bonus tip that you made me think of, that's not part of our other bonus tips. This Ooh. is a separate one, is get a pool noodle, cut it in half, and then oh, that's right. put it around your slide. So the kitchen slide, you just kind of encompass it, like slide it under there well, they're and like, it will help prevent the air. They're like those pipe uh, foam things because they're already slit. Yeah. You can buy those. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So we'll throw it on an Amazon link below, but basically they're already pre-slit and you just slide them around the slide and it creates that barrier. You're good yeah. to go. Before moving on, I did want to say about that Reflectix. Okay. Oh my goodness. Just before warning, it's kind of depressing. Oh, like yeah. you put them on the windows, you're not going to get any sunshine in. Nope. We covered yeah. all of our windows in Reflectix and the only chance we had was opening the door and literally <laughs> looking outside. So just forewarning. We left one window open oh, we did. without Reflectix. So you just saw our heads like creeping out, like <laughs> help us. And people are like, are those people okay? <laughs> we need vitamin D, man. All right, now the time has come that y'all been waiting for. Let's get into some bonus tips. Some Ooh. thanks, Hanks bonus tips. Hashtag because thanks, Hanks. We got some good ones for you. Thanks, Hanks. Propane tanks come in many sizes. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to always partake in the larger ones. You can buy them, you can rent them, and then people can come fill them up. You can go get them filled up fill them up. It just depends in your area, like where you can do that. Why do we say this? Well, because like anything else in life, the bulk discounts when you're RV winter camping, you're going to be running out of propane quickly and frequently. And you're going to constantly having be having to make trips to the store, like Ace Hardware or something. Yeah. We went through a 30 pound propane tank in 24 hours. That's a lot. Yeah. I went quick. So if you're somewhere stationary, get a larger propane tank and partake in the discounts. Mm -hmm. And then you're not having to make the trips yourself. You can make the calls. They'll come fill it up and then you're good to go. But I thought you liked going outside in your pajamas at 4 a.m. to like switch over the Hold tanks. on. Just hold on. We'll get into that in just a second. Pump the brakes there. Nay, nay. <laughs> Uh, don't forget that some AC units come with a heat pump option. Oh, good one. Yeah. Yeah. Stay nice and toasty with that. But you do have to know that if it's like below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, they don't really work as much. And you'll see on some thermostats that you'll switch it to heat pump mm -hmm. and it'll like coincide blowing the furnace because yeah. it's like, eh, it's a little too cold. Now, not everyone's gonna have this option, but if you do have that option, use it accordingly because a lot of the RV parks you stay at, Electricity is included, so you can be using the electricity to your advantage and saving on propane. You see what we did there? Like you said, 40 degrees or higher is usually the sweet spot for running these bad yeah. boys. If you have the option, park next to something that's really big that's gonna help block the wind. We knew we were gonna eventually like face these wind chills. Well, mm -hmm. we didn't know right away because right we had the frozen box. <laughs> but after we words, we learned quickly and we realized, well, Let's just park next to something and hopefully the wind will not be blowing that way. Yeah. We'll be covered on one side. Yeah. You know, see what I'm doing there? I love that. Ah, you know, yeah. you gotta catch both. <laughs> yeah. Anything helps. I mean, honestly, yeah. even some trees or something, just anything to cut down on the wind. Mm. 
when it comes to skirting, we would advise you steer away from using hay bales. Don't do it, because you're yeah. gonna attract every rodent under the sun under there. Yeah, and I guess if that is your option and that's what you're doing, just be prepared for the rodents and maybe set some traps or something. Keep us updated if you've done this before. <laughs> Have you had experience with the hay bales? Does it work, does it not? Or you know, yeah. the rodents, mm. The mice are like, bring it on, it's a hay ride. <laughs> Try to utilize the campground's facilities as much as possible because that way mm. you're not like having to deal with dumping your tanks so many times when it's cold. And what I like about that is unlimited hot water. Yeah, <laughs> you actually have a really good point there because the more you use your tanks and the toilet and the shower and all that, the more you're gonna have to dump and the more you're gonna expose yourself to risk of freezing pipes. Yeah. So if you're on a friend's property, or you're at a, like a campground, utilize their facilities as much as you can. Just a, just just a little a smidge. Just, I mean, it's like just a little tip for you guys, you know? And it will help just cut down on any like concerns of potentially freezing your pipes. Don't do that. Don't go there. Not good. Don't go there, girlfriend. But somewhere you do wanna go, check this out. We have learned so many hard lessons over the years with winter RV camping. So look into these videos right here on the screen, click on them with your phone and check them out. You're gonna laugh your guts out. <laughs> yes, I said it. And you're gonna learn a lot more because we have a lot more points to cover. And get more confidence before you do winter RVing. Exactly. We'll see you next week. We love you guys. Happily ever Hank's checking out. Bye guys. See ya.